guys, welcome back to the channel. A couple weeks ago I uploaded a video of me building the Zone Star P802QR2 Dual Extruder 3D printer, and I've been printing with it pretty much non-stop since then. This is my first Dual Extruder 3D printer, so it's been a little bit of a learning experience. Uh, full disclosure, this printer was sent to me by Gearbest to review. They're not paying me for the review, and this is my full unbiased opinion based on my experiences so far. For starters, this printer comes as a kit that you'll need to assemble, and building a printer yourself is a good way to notice any flaws that need to be corrected before they become a problem. For example, while I was building the Zone Star, I noticed that there was a pretty serious shock hazard where the plug is attached to the frame. If you didn't see my build video, the problem was the wires coming from the power plug that connect to the power supply were resting up against the bottom of one of the metal support beams on the frame. There was a thin rubber boot covering the connectors, but if that ever slipped off, there's a good chance one of the mains voltage wires could have electrified your entire frame. So if that happened and you reached out and touched any part of the printer, there's a good chance you would get electrocuted. Anyway, this is no longer a problem as I designed a power supply cover that fits on this printer perfectly. It covers up all of the wires going to the power supply and moves the plug and switch out of the frame so no wires are resting up against any bare metal. If any of you own this printer or decide to pick one up, I highly recommend printing off this power supply cover before anything else. Another issue I ran into after getting the safety concerns taken care of is the fact that there are two nozzles on a single X carriage. That means if you're printing with two colors at the same time, by default one nozzle is going to be left at full temperature and possibly oozing molten filament while the other extruder is doing its thing. This is probably my biggest complaint about this printer. However, I feel like I've gotten a semi-decent profile set up in Simplify 3D to combat this problem. It could still use some tweaking and refining, but I've been able to get some decent dual color prints out of it. Basically, the most notable part of this profile is that it moves the nozzle out of the way and cools the inactive nozzle down while heating up the other nozzle. This makes for less oozing, but it's a pain to have to change the G-code scripts for printing different temperature filaments. I also created a profile specifically for single color prints, and I'll leave a link to download both in the video description below. How does the printer perform on single color prints? I'd say actually very well. Assuming you've built the printer correctly and calibrated the mainboard voltages the way the instruction manual says to, the printer quality on single extruder prints should come out quite nicely. And since the build volume is 200 by 200 by 240 the print volume and quality are both better than the Maker Select without any modifications. The bed is the same size on both, but the Maker Select is limited to about 170mm print height. They claim 180, but I've never been able to get that tall of prints because the frame gets in the way. The Zone Star, on the other hand, can actually reach about 235mm print height due to the open front Prusa-like design. The firmware installed on the printer by default is Repetier, which does have some nice benefits, but if you're hoping to use the auto bed leveling feature, you're probably better off switching to Marlin. Auto bed leveling on this printer does work if you add a G32 command immediately after the G28 command to home all, but for some reason Repetier still relies on the Z-axis end stop switch in addition to the sensor. So if you don't home all before you run the auto bed leveling routine, the firmware assumes you did anyway. That means if the z-axis is currently 100mm up, it will lower 100mm to the bed, take the distance from there, then raise up 100mm, move to the next spot, lower 100mm again, and so on. Also, there isn't really an obvious z-axis offset, so you still have to manually level the bed, and the sensor just puts in correction for any uneven spots. I believe the bed coating setting is a possible way to configure your z-axis offset, but it's still hard to predict how the auto bed leveling functionality works in conjunction with the z-axis end stop switch. Aside from the power supply cover, the only other upgrade I've done to this printer since building it is I installed a PEI sheet on the bed. This doesn't really affect the functionality, it's just nice not having to replace masking tape between every print. However, I do plan on making some more modifications including changing to Marlin firmware and possibly switching to only use a single nozzle with a Y splitter to connect the two Bowden tubes. That will make it much easier to prevent oozing, and there will be no need for changing the nozzle temperature on tool changes. The stock firmware does allow you to automatically switch between the two nozzles, and there's a setting that allows you to align the location of the second nozzle when it changes, 
but it's pretty confusing in my opinion, so if you decide to stick to the stock setup, you will need to configure that very carefully. For dual color printing, the printer does a pretty nice job as long as it's set up right. You will most likely need to use an ooze shield if you're using Simplify 3D to make sure less stray filament gets stuck to the side of your print. I haven't spent the time to create a slick 3 hour profile or a cura profile, so if any of you have a profile that you prefer, please feel free to mention it or leave a link down in the comment section. My overall thoughts on this printer are, if you're brand new to 3D printing and not a fan of tinkering, or if you want a printer that prints exactly what you want it to straight out of the box, or if you're looking for a printer for a little kid that's interested in getting started in 3D printing, this printer is most likely not for you. There are some serious safety concerns as I mentioned before, and they're easy enough to fix, but attention to detail is a must. However, if you are a fan of tinkering and want a project to work on, or if you're looking for an affordable way to dabble in the world of dual extrusion, this printer would make a fun project in my opinion. As a single extruder printer, the quality is pretty much on par with some better Prusa i3 style printers that I've seen. As a dual extruder printer, it can easily be just as good but will most likely need some careful calibration and or upgrades to make it stand out. Anyway, I plan on making more videos about this printer in the future as I do some more mods to it. If any of you are interested in picking up the Zone Star P802 QR2, I'll leave a link in the description below where you can go pick one up. I wanted to say another big thanks to Gearbest for sending me this printer to review. I'm really looking forward to seeing what it can do after some further upgrades. If you haven't seen my last video where I built the Zone Star, I'll leave a link in the video description below where you can check it out. If you have any suggestions for videos you'd like to see on my channel, feel free to leave them down in the comment section. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time!